Just like REST has text-based URLs, MQTT has text-based topics. And like REST, MQTT can manage arbitrary data payloads. You can send text or binary, a photo for example. As long as the clients can parse the data, you can use it. Basically, any packet of data up to a theoretical max of 256 megabytes. Although, in reality, most brokers and clients don't expect more than a few kilobytes of data per packet. Unlike HTTP, there isn't any big buildup and teardown overhead for every request, and we can stream data in and out of multiple topics quickly and easily. This makes it easy to adapt to any transport since there are no underlying layers that you have to depend on. And full MQTT clients can fit in microcontrollers with as little as 32K of flash and 2K of RAM. MQTT can run on top of any kind of transport, whether it be a mesh network, TCP IP, or Bluetooth. But if you're using Bluetooth, XB, LoRa, or any other non-internet connected protocol or device, remember, you're going to need a gateway to get data to and from the internet. Let's get into the details of MQTT. MQTT has some terms that make it easy to remember what does what. There are two types of players in an MQTT network, the broker and the client. There's only one broker, but there can be multiple clients. The broker is considered the reliable one in the network relationship. Even if the connection goes out, the broker is expected to be available whenever the transport is up and running. The broker gets all of the published messages from the clients and then stores them in a database or just in memory. The broker then delivers the messages to the subscriber clients. In general, the NQTT broker is not what we spend a lot of time engineering, as there are many great free broker softwares, as well as broker services you can pay for that will do all the management for you. The part that you will be most involved with is the client. That's your application, whether it be a sensor, robot, or toaster. Each device you design will come with its own MQTT client. Whenever there's a reading to upload, the client will publish that reading to the broker using a topic. Like we said before, topics are sort of like URLs or a file system. They use slash delimiters and text categorization. So much like you would sort your personal documents into folders like so, or a work document like this, topics have a hierarchy. Let's say you have a factory like uh, this one and you wanted to make temperature sensors placed on the HVAC units of each floor in your building publish their temperature. You could set up your topics like so. Sensors slash floor slash temperature slash HVAC ID. So the third floor main AC would be publishing to a topic like this. The 10th floor boiler would have a topic like this. And the fourth floor heater would use a topic like this. While there is no requirement that we organize our topics like so, not doing that is akin to putting every document you make on your computer desktop. You can do it, but it makes it really hard to keep track and makes it really hard to find stuff later. Most brokers require that you set up your topics ahead of time and will not let clients publish or subscribe to non-existent topics. This is good for avoiding typos and corrupted data, but sometimes you can set up your broker to be more flexible. Whenever a publication comes in for a topic, that topic will automatically be created. And this is good when you have a dynamic sensor network with new nodes joining without warning. Likewise, any client can subscribe to a topic the broker has, and a broker will send an error for that topic if it does not exist yet. An MQTT client publishes messages to a topic by sending the message and the topic to the broker. The broker then sends that message to all the clients that have subscribed to the topic. That's it. That's how MQTT works. Using the topic model, you can do a lot with a little. For example, you can develop MQTT clients to only use specific topics to publish and subscribe to when you want to have configuration changes, not just data. One thing to note is that topics don't have strict typing built in. There's nothing stopping a client in this factory's temperature network from uploading a binary cat photo to the temperature topic. This is unlike REST, JSON, and XML, where you can have more control over data checking. Now, you can add code to your MQTT broker that will scrub bad data out for you, but it's not built in. And this is one of those trade-offs of a lightweight protocol. There is one clever trick that MQTT brokers and clients can do that you can't do with REST. You can subscribe to any part of a topic. 
So maybe you want everything at a location, or maybe just sensors on the third floor, or maybe just a specific temperature sensor. You can use wildcards in your topics to get just what you want. The wildcards available are plus or hash. Here's one example. This topic has a single wildcard plus. This would let you monitor all of the temperature sensors on the third floor. But you can get even more advanced with subscriptions like this topic, which has two plus wildcards. This would let you get all of the temperature data on all of the floors of the HVAC units that are publishing to the temperature topic. And you'd get updates any time one of those sensors were published. A plus wildcard is used to get a single level of hierarchy. The hash symbol can be used as a topic wildcard for all remaining levels of hierarchy. So for example, if you wanted to subscribe to everything going on on all of your floors, you'd use a topic like this, and it would match any level of hierarchy after sensors. Or maybe you want to listen to all 10th floor sensors, you would use the hash wildcard like so.